Hey guys, this is Ed Rowe, and today we're going to explain what Redux actually is, what it does, without all those fancy buzz terms, and just explain what it does in its very simplest form. So now, if even on the Redux website, you see all these fancy terminologies, predictable, centralized, debuggable, flexible, and then you may see diagrams that look like this. Reducers, selectors, store, action handlers. Or even like this, another cycle, action creator, action, dispatch, reducers, state. These are all scary terminology that if you're new to Redux, it's very scary. You don't know what any of these means. So you feel like there's a mountain of things that you have to learn to understand what Redux does and how it works. But if you've already worked with React, you should pretty much know how Redux will work and you'll be able to understand all these terminology because it's very simple. Like if you break Redux down, what it does and the problem it solves, it's actually very, very simple. So let's get started with that. Okay, so to explain what Redux does, I have set up a very simple, very minimalistic React and Redux application. Um, you don't have to cut along. This is just to explain what Redux does. So what I have done is I've created a simple app with two buttons. One is built in React, React. one is built in Redux. And all what they'll do is if you click on one of them, the number will increase the count or the count will be increased. Same with the Redux button. Um, if you look at the code, we're just going to compare and contrast the difference. So if you look at the React component, we have a typical use state with the zero as a starting value. And then we have set value, which is going to increment our count by one. So this is the function essentially that will increase this value every time we click it. Now, if you take a look at the Redux component, you'll realize it's not that much different. Here, instead of use state, we have use selector that we grab the value from Redux, and then we have a use dispatch. This is something that you would always have to do if you're going to use an action creator. Now, action creators are essentially, if you look right here, set val, we're dispatching set val. It looks kind of scary right here, but it's not that big of a deal because if you look, set val, it's doing essentially the same thing, except we have a dispatch in front of it, and set val is inside that. So Every time you're calling an action creator, which is just a function, you're going to have to dispatch it. Now, if you look at this, we are importing set val from our reducer file. So set val is basically an action creator is what they call. And if you look here, this is our boilerplate for setting our value. So basically this is a function that does what React already has set up and kind of implicitly doing it's updating this state value by one whereas here we have an action creator and then we have a case set val doing essentially the same thing except it's updating the state or store is what they call in redux so essentially we have an action creator and then we have a reducer case that will allow us to update state. So essentially these two together combined do what this is essentially doing. So essentially they're kind of doing the same thing and I'll explain what the difference is and why you would re need Redux instead. For something like this, obviously you can just do it with React, but this, I just wanted to show you with Redux, this is how you would do it. Of course, you have this setup in Redux. This is just, I didn't mention this, but this is just to set up Redux. And all you have to do is set that up once and then you're good to go. All right, so to explain this further, I've created a diagram of what this is doing. So we have our use state over here. This is our React version. So basically, we have our state and then the value that is being displayed and set value is going to be updating the state. So anytime you call set value, it's going to update the state, the value will get updated, you will have a new value. Now if you look at the Redux version, 
I have created something similar. So now if you look here, we have state, but it's now called a store instead. Same thing, except it's just a Redux store is what they call. That will display our value. However, instead of what we had with said value over here, we have an action creator, which dispatches an action and it up goes to the reducer and that reducer will update the state. So essentially these three things is doing what set value is doing over here. So this is a new part and these are all fancy terms for essentially the function that will update the state. So you don't have to worry about, you just have to know what these kind of do and what they represent in the Redux architecture. But together combined, they represent what said value originally does. So it's pretty simple, pretty simple idea. Don't get bogged down by all these terminology. Just know that together they do a combined effort of updating the store. That's Redux in a nutshell. But why would you need Redux? As we've seen with React and Redux, the React code is way more simpler. Why would you need to do Redux? We've done the same exact thing, but Redux just has more code. Redux essentially solves two very simple problems. One is being able to access state everywhere easily. Very simple issue, but makes everything easier if you can access state everywhere. So our first problem, if you look, I'll have this diagram of components. In app, we have component A, component B, and A has component AA, AB, and so on and so forth. Let's say in component BBA, we have state of zero. Just like in our example over here, we've created state particular to this particular component. What if we just wanted to display this particular state in AB? Now, React has limitations. You cannot pass state upwards. You cannot pass state up to the top component. If you've ever heard of React being unidirectional, or Redux being unidirectional, means you just cannot pass state up the component tree. For example, right here, you cannot pass this zero up to app over here. You cannot do that. So instead, the solution for React would be to promote the state over here. And then you can pass this state down to A, then A, B, which is a big hassle. Having to pass down props through multiple components is a big hassle, a lot of code. Same with rewriting this so that this has the state. This is a problem because it makes it really, like it's very strenuous to have to refactor, rewrite this particular code not to mention passing all the props. Even if you had all your state in the app, you would have to pass down props multiple times every single time you create a state, which is very, it's a big hassle. So instead, the solution is Redux. Redux can provide a store that gets attached to the app and you put it into a provider component. Provider is just another way of providing the store and the state will go like into this particular store. And now with all the Redux code, you can ac easily access this store anywhere through the application using use selector. Use selector allows you to grab any state in the store and you can access that anywhere. So that in a nutshell is Redux. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you enjoy my content, feel free to comment below if you have any questions. Hope you have a good day.